welcome, Josie, and thanks for joining Thank us you. on the first of our Real <coughs> series. Congratulations on reaching your first final as Real Madrid coach. Fans are delighted, the players seem really united, but how did you feel to lead them to that? You know, I think uh, it's just um, a little step. It's not what, what I want for my team. If you tell me that uh, in my period at Real Madrid, the, the highest moment was to play a, a King Cup final, I would be very disappointed. It's just a step, it's a first step. Um, for example, in, when I was in Chelsea, the first step was uh, a Carling Cup final, also in, in the middle of, of the season. But just a step. I want, I want more for, uh, uh, for my team. I want my players to be motivated with, with this final. But it's not possible that this final is, is the highest moment that we search for. It was a very difficult route to the final and a very difficult January for Real Madrid. Nine games, two games a week. But if you were to put a positive spin on all those games being played so quickly, would you say that it's accelerated the progression of the unity within the team? You know, I think the team is unit since, since the beginning. But um, I think that the best thing from this period was to play two difficult ties against Seville and Atletico which was not good in terms of a championship, but was good in terms of experience to play knockout, knockout um, rounds. Uh, we have Champions League waiting for us, and to play against Seville and Atletico Madrid is not so different than to play a Champions League uh, knockout round. So I think it was good for the experience of the team to play the first game at home against Atletico, win. So we go to Vicente Calderon and we have a, a victory to, to control. Uh, we go the first match in Seville, we, we win in Seville 1-0, so the second match at home, we have to control also the emotion of, 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 of that game. So I think in terms of experience for Champions League, maybe it was a good training for us. Yeah, well, as you said, the last 16 is coming up. It's been a difficult round for Real Madrid in previous years, but they've shown quite the appetite for the knockout game. How do you think that will help them when it comes to the game? No, I love Leon? the knockouts. I love the knockout. I think um, knockout is for um, mentally strong people because the pressure is there all the time. The details that make the difference. Uh, one goal more you should score or one goal less you should, um, you should concede. Uh, you know, one mistake you make, everything can make, can make the difference. I remember, for example, um, Real Madrid last season against Olympique Lyon probably the first match at, at Lyon, one nil result. Everybody was thinking that's good enough for the second match. Uh, probably is not good enough. We, we never know when one nil defeat away is, um, is good enough. The second match at home, I remember Real had a chance to score the second goal. Uh, they didn't. So in the, in the second half, they scored the one one and after that, the game was, was over. And I think this these details, the pressure of these details, is something that I feel very, very comfortable. So instead of feeling uh, the pressure of Champions League is arriving, I'm feeling the appetite of Champions League is arriving. Well, it's understandable you're renowned as a cup specialist. What is it that makes you so successful when it comes to knockout games? You know, no, as I was saying, knockout, you need to be strong mentally. At the same time, you need to analyze very well opponents because details can make a, a, real, a real difference. And I used to play the first match, either at home or away, I used to play trying to win it. It doesn't matter if it is at home, if it is away. The first match is to try to win. Sometimes you don't. But uh, the direction you have to go is this is the direction, not be waiting for the second match uh, to resolve the, the situation. Where is the first match? Is at home. Okay, let's try to win. Where is the first match? Is away at home. Okay, let's try to win it. So I think is is a good approach. And you've got some excellent players at your disposal. You witness the talents week in week out of players like Azil Di Maria, Cristiano Kaká. Do they still impress you? These type of players, despite your years in the game. Yeah, these are the players that everybody likes to to see them play. And of course, I'm the coach, but I'm also a football 
uh, lover. So when I'm on the bench, you can say I have time to enjoy also some uh, some details. But of course, I, I, I build a team. These players are um, working for the team. And in, in this aspect, I'm, I'm lucky because the, the players in our team that you can say with more uh, talent or perfume or the way you want to, to, to explain their talent, um, they are team players and they are working for the team, so that's good. Have you been impressed with anybody in particular? In my team? I can say that, um, for example, Arbelo is, is the kind of player that uh, um, doesn't impress people because he's not uh, Maradona or Zidane or this kind of super player, but he's the kind of player that impresses coaches. And he impresses me. Why does he impress you? Because from 0 to 10, he's never 6. He's never 10. He's always between 7 and 9. You can always rely on him. He plays against many times the best player of the opponent and he puts that opponent in the pocket. And um, I'm very, very calm on, on, on the bench when he's playing either on the right or on the left. Of course, on the left he can't attack because he's not his natural uh, position. But he's the kind of player that uh, you need in your team. Fantastic. Well, you've managed the likes of Porto, Chelsea, Inter Milan and now Real Madrid, some of the biggest clubs in the world. How do you deal with the pressure that comes with being a manager of such big clubs? I don't deal. <laughs> I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I, I, I feel exactly the same responsibility to, to, to play Real Madrid against Atletico Madrid than when I was in Union Leiria playing against uh, another small team in, in Portugal. A match is to, is to give the maximum you can, is to try to win, and is also to, um, is also to enjoy. So it doesn't matter if if he's a small or a big one, you just have to to enjoy and feel privileged to, to, to do it. And in football, you've worked with and alongside some of the biggest names in the game, some of the biggest coaches you've come up against as well. Who's been your biggest influence in your coaching career? I think myself. Thinking alone, asking questions to, my, to myself, studying reactions I had, studying uh, decisions I made, uh, studying what happened during the match, what I felt during the match, what I thought during the match, trying to find training exercises to explore some, some points I, I, I think we need to, to, to explore. So I think it was me against me, against myself. Well, nobody better to rely on than yourself. Who outside of football has influenced you in a positive way? You know, I'm married for more than 20 years. So you can imagine that uh, we share a lot. And uh, she doesn't like football. She doesn't uh, understand much about football. But she knows me well, so I can say it was always a good influence on me. How many people do know you well, the real Mourinho? A circle of family, which is, which is not big, and a circle of friends outside football, which is not also big, and the people that work with me in, in all the clubs, and there are a lot in between players and directors and uh, st staffs, because to these people, I. I, I open myself completely and they know exactly who I am and how I am. So they are the people that know me better. You've made a huge impression on the world of sports, on the world of football. How would you like to be remembered? I'm not worried about, about that. I just want to leave on, on my kids the greatest memories. And in football, you, you make history with the with, with results. So I, I, I'm not worried about it. In 50 years, somebody will say, who was the first coach to win 
da FIFA Gold Ball, José Mourinho, who was one of the three coaches to win two Champions League with uh, two different uh, clubs. I was one of them. Was the first one, uh, not the first one. Was one of the coaches that won uh, championships in uh, three different countries. I was one of them. So the history is made by by what you do, and I don't care with it. Then I'm sure you'd like to keep making history. What are your hopes here at Real Madrid? Well, I give my best. When I give my best, because I trust my my work, I feel results will will arrive, and that's what I that's what I want. I don't want to be in Real Madrid and say one day I was Real Madrid coach. I want to say one day I was Real Madrid coach, and during my time, we won this and this and this. This is my my objective. Okay, this is quite a difficult one, but one word to describe Real Madrid and one word to describe yourself. To describe Real Madrid? Huge. And so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> How about yourself? So difficult. <laughs> <laughs> a phrase. <laughs> If you were to sum yourself up Me? to somebody who didn't know you? A good guy and a very good coach. Okay. Thank you very much Thank for joining you. us, Jose.